everybody. How are we doing on this great afternoon? Woo! Well, I'm, I'm grinning extra, extra, extra wide tonight because um, truly, hand on the Bible, this group is the reason I started loving country music. This group, this group, and, and Kenny Rogers. Look, see there. Oh, hey, get back, get back. And I've just, they are the best. I've been blessed to see them at the Opry when I hosted out there. And I just, there's nothing like their family harmonies. There's nothing like them, ladies and gentlemen, the Gatlin Brothers. Come on out. Woohoo! <laughs> He's shy too. We're going to work with him a little bit. I know you're all wondering. They sing great, they look great, and all that, but can Rudy juggle? Well, absolutely. Oh! Oh, wow! your craft services. Is there no beginning to my talent? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you have back there? What'd you find? My name is Blank and I hung out with Lisa Marie Presley at Dollywood. What what is that, that come what is from? that about? <laughs> What's it from? I don't know. I don't know. A game show. I okay. babysat with her one night. You what? Well she was just a bait I mean little. Dolly? Yeah Dolly. <laughs> Yeah, we did a little different take on that breastfeeding oh. thing. Oh. oh, get real. Oh. Some of the things y'all watch on TV, good Lord. That's funny now. You Lisa, can see where this is going to go today, right? You can hello? see how this is going to be chaotic and wonderful and happy. I was auditioning for the Imperials. Now for our gospel number. For the Imperials, you know, great gospel group with Elvis. And... and after they closed with Elvis, I didn't really work with them, but I worked. They they closed on Wednesday night right. at the Hilton with Elvis, and opened the next day with Jimmy Dean at the Landmark. and And Priscilla Presley, and the late J, uh, late great Joe Muscayo, uh -huh. his wife, uh, Carlana, at that one one of his I, I don't remember which number that was, uh, but a pick a number. But Lisa, uh, I mean uh, Priscilla and. Um, Carlana were dear friends, and literally, Lisa Marie was just like maybe six months old, oh. and they wanted, and I was just the baritone singer trying out for the Imperials, and Carlana called me or came backstage or something and said, would you babysit? And, and uh, yeah, I did. You babysat Lisa, Lisa Marie? I, yes, she, I was 21, and she was about six months old. Wow. Bless Rush her with heart. greatness. She never recovered, but she did. <laughs> yeah. I said before y'all came out here, I know you heard it because you were just right there, and, I, and a lot of people we feel the same listening. way. What's that? We weren't listening. You weren't paying attention. That's okay. That's okay. No, we, we were paying attention. We were listening. We weren't hearing. I gotcha. Yeah. I said that this, you all, the Gatlin brothers, are the reason that I love country music. I've told you this personally in the hallways of the Grand Ole Opry, but... If when I was, I don't even remember how old I was, but I would sing Sure Feels Like Love to the top of my voice. And you all you shake. You do it right now? N oh, no, no. You, you do it. You sing Lee. You do it. I so am not. Come on. No, no, no. What can you do it I don't know. Sing, man. Sing. Sure feels like love. The last I remember. It sure feels like love. The best I recall. Two matters. It's so good. It feels like. The first time I reached out and really went for it all. It sure feels like lunch. 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 <laughs> it sure feels like lunch. Well, you didn't even get to the good part. Because I can't we'll remember the last, last time the love felt this strong. So you're either going to have to stop what you do to me right now? Or you're gonna have to keep doing it all night long. All night long. Man, that's awesome. That was well, that's, that. that's very kind of We you. were oh, very kind of you. Thank you. I remember you stopped me and told me about that. That's been a a long time. It's been a couple of years ago. But we I, know, I know you get this a lot. 
I mean, you guys. No, that's the first time anybody's ever sung Sure Feels Like it Love. Really <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were channeling our inner Gibb brothers. Oh, who have become sure very. Like we really were. We said, let's go in there and kind of. This should sound like. And one of these days, we're going to do it with him. And oh. bless his heart, he's, he's lost two of his brothers. I know. But, uh, he, he needs a brother. A, a band of brothers around him. Well, right, T.G. T.G. is, T. G. is, is a really real good friend. friend of, and I told T.G. when we he lost his last brother, said, you let Barry know. I told you to tell Barry that anytime he needed some brothers, the brothers oh. Gatlin would jump in there Absolutely. with the we'll last remaining that. brothers Gibb yeah. and uh, yeah. do That'd something. We've done well, some stuff with him. Uh, what happened? What, were y'all there? It, you just didn't go with me that night? To the, I was busy. The Waldorf? I was busy. The Waldorf, no, Larry, you were at the Waldorf. We were over at the Holiday Inn Express hanging out <laughs> at the buffet. The buffet, mother, come what on. What were you doing that you didn't go with me to the Waldorf? Oh, I was busy. I was I, a I busy even, boy. What were you talking about? I don't know what 82, year. What year? 82 hmm. Grammys in New York. All right, we went the, to the Grammys. We what were we nominated for? Show sure feels like love. <laughs> Best I remember. Okay, I can't remember. we were nominated. Okay. When we tell all this stuff, I don't know if y'all heard this, how many of you were up here the other day. Here's what you need to know, the most important thing about this relationship. All these stories that we tell you are true. We do not put any hair on it. Now, Texans can put up some hair on a story if we have to. But we don't, that, that means you can make up stuff. The other part about this is we are not trying to name drop for, the, for its own sake. You, y'all are all part of this. Do, do, you, do you realize that you're all part of this? We got to go to New York. We were nominated for a Grammy, and maybe if it was '82, all the gold was already all the gold had already lost a Grammy. Anyway, we were nominated for a Grammy. I'm sitting there on the front row, and Lionel Richie and I are betting hundred dollar bills as to who's going to win the next Grammy. What I should have done was bet him who's going to be the first one to slap the crap out of the host. Oh. <laughs> ah, room pop up. What I mean? What I mean? What I mean? Boom, boom. Okay. Okay. Now see that that should have that is excess. We, I wrote a song not long ago. Says I got more money in my pocket than my daddy ever had in the bank. So what I'm saying is we have been very blessed. And you sit there, well, you're you're being cocky or arrogant, of betting hundred dollar bills. But it just seemed to be the thing to do at the time to sit there and bet who's going to win. With, and okay, so Barry had produced the Guilty album. For Babs, for Barbara Streisand, and it won the Grammy. So after the deal that night, I, after the show, I'd never met Barry Gibb. I, I had known Barbara because she recorded one of my songs that she put in the can, and, but it finally came out about six or eight years ago. That's a different story too. So I walked up on stage. I waited my turn because obviously there were a bunch of people around Barry. And finally, he just kind of turned my way, and I st stuck my hand out, said, "Barry, I'm oh dear God, we love the Gatlin brothers." Jesus, you know, and just hugged as, it, and y'all weren't, you were busy. I was busy. I, he was at the Holiday Inn. I, I, yeah, I was at the buffet. At the already holiday already, already at the buffet. I don't, I don't remember. There's the a lot of that going to the buffet running around here. Yeah, some of these, I saw all these people there this morning. <laughs> hey, you know what? You, the three of us, seriously, we need to have a business meeting as soon as possible. As that was we, that? Well, we just have some bill. I forgot it came up today. We need a, Place that's quiet where nobody will bother us, where there aren't any people around. Huh. Oh. Let's have it at the salad bar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's good. I've already, I've <laughs> Me too. I've been. I put on my COVID nineteen. How about y'all? <laughs> so anyway, anyway, that's pretty much any time though, right? Yeah. We can do it just from just now to any time. Sure. Yeah. I want to go to Texas. Wait a minute. Well, okay. My then. story. Okay. Sorry. Because this is good. Y'all are part of this. I wouldn't have been able to go. We wouldn't have been there. So, Barry and Linda, Barry invited, uh, it, Janice, my wife, was with me. Barry invited over, uh, me over to the Waldorf, the Waldorf store. We were staying at the plaza, slumming down Darling. the street. Darling. So, he said, come over. We, I went to his suite, and Robin was with him that night. Uh, Morris was not there. Right. Robin was with him, so he had one brother there. I didn't have either one of mine there. Went over to Waldorf about midnight, and we sat in that suite and ordered room service 
And boy, it was one of the most glorious. You talk about having a camera. Yeah. Barry a and Robin sang Steve and Rudy's part oh. on Gatlin Brothers songs. We'd swap one. Then I'd sing Morris's part on Bee Gees songs. And we did it from midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh. I mean, it would, and Janice had told me, uh, you can go do what you want to. I'm going to bed. But she's not a road bunny like we are. So, and again, I'm not being facetious. We're not, we can blow smoke with the best of them. Folks, we are simple kids from Odessa, Texas, whose father uh, work, was a working man and taught us to work. Uh, and we're grateful for that, but you really are a part of that. We would, we'd be in Odessa right now if it weren't for y'all buying records and coming on cruises. Do they? We'd be in Odessa, in the oil business, looking for a job, because at $140 a barrel, and the government lot letting people. My daddy and my grand, our daddy and our granddaddy would be out of a job right now with the current shit that's going on. I won't do any more politics, but that's just the way Larry, Steve, and Rudy feel about it. Ordinarily, you could find a job out there at $140 yeah. a barrel. I never go out to Odessa when the oil gets around 100 because they'll grab you and throw you in a truck <laughs> and take you to the rig. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Thank a singer. Work. I play guitar. I, I, I know you don't. Not any, so I'm not on this tower. You're, you're part of that, and we're grateful. We do not take it lightly, okay? Yeah. What do you do for a living, sir? What did you retire for? Retire is a good job. What did you retire from? High school right. What do you teach? Oh, God, God love you. God, yeah. God bless you. Our mother was a special ed teacher. God bless you. Thank you. If you're a teacher, stand up right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Stand up. Teachers. Stand up. There you go. Yay. All right, now all you teachers, sit down. And the rest of you, stand up for the teachers. Yeah. Okay? Stand up for the teachers. All right? Steve's wife's a teacher. He was a teacher. Our mom was yep, a teacher. My yep. wife's a teacher. Really? My sister's a teacher. Yeah. My grandmother was a teacher. Really? What? I know this story like the back of my hand, I think, but I love to hear, you know, growing up in Odessa, Texas, and this family harmony, just start us on the very beginnings of when y'all started to sing together. Take it. Take Abilene, it. Texas, March 8th, 1955. Really? I was two and a half. Steve was four. Larry was six. <laughs> wow. It's all on GatlinBrothers.com. Check it out and buy something, too, while you're on the <laughs> website. We won a little talent show. Well, we won, the, we won our division, but we were the only ones in the 2, 4, and 6 division. <laughs> hey, you want to show them what it looked like? Oh, hey, yeah, show, wins show a win. Follow me. Just show me what it looked like. Here. Ray, come here. Right around here. Okay, you never know what's going to happen. I know, I'm See sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. No, I'm not sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. With this I, bag of these, oh, you I, want me to get down there on those? Oh. I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. I woke up with joy in We're my soul. We're two and a half, four and six. I knew my Lord had control. I knew I was walking in that light. Cause I've been on my knees in the night. I prayed till the Lord gave a sign. And now I'm feeling mighty fine. Give us the trophy. And we still had the trophy. It was Cavalcade of Talent, 1955. And a gentleman heard about that, read it. There's all those, all the papers. All one of them. Abilene Reporter on March the 9th of 1955. And a gentleman there heard about that. And he had a little TV and a radio show, and his name was Winston Moore. Does anyone know his stage name? I do. No, no, besides you. Anybody for the prize? He had a little song called... Don't let stars get in your eyes. Don't let the moon break your heart. That a boy. Five, you went. That's right. He wrote that, recorded it, had a little, had a, come up here and get your prize. And your prize is Rudy. Do I need that dollar? Yeah, I really do. Thank you. Get out of here. Now, boy, that is a guy. Where are you from? Well. Well, here, 
Here's another dollar. You really? Are you kidding? That's crazy. No, it's not. How old, how old are you? How old are you? I'm 74. Where'd you go to elementary school? Travis. I went to Bonham. I know. On 7th and Leggett. Where was Travis? It's it, in the... No, they really don't Elm care. Street. I'm just trying Around to... Elm Street. Elm Street. <laughs> well, El Elmwood West over there, that shopping center. That's by Bonham. Yeah. Abilene. Do you remember the Abilene High School fight, uh, Alma Mater? Oh. Dear old Abilene High. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Well, they won three straight okay. state championship okay. games. And, okay, but him no, to know Slim, that is crazy. And okay, Dad, take a take a, right take a powder, Dad. Mom, yeah, that's that. Mom, that's unbelievable. Wow, that's a small that's world, eh? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> so I'd like it back after. Yeah, we you finish. you can go you can go get a third of a gallon of gas. That's for that. right. Or no, about, no, that's not right. a tenth of a gallon. You can't get a pack of breath mints for that. You, huh? That's all you get. That's all you get. That's yeah. all you I got, get. I got some more. So do you have some? Well, save them. Everybody gets a dollar bill. Everybody gets a dollar bill. So we uh, he had us on his TV and radio show. Uh, he had retired, kind of, and and moved back to Abilene. Uh, and that's so we've got pictures on the website again. Did I mention the website where you can go and Gatlinbrothers.com? Gatlinbrothers.com, and, Gatlin yeah. and uh, started singing gospel, you know, mm -hmm. uh, music. Mom played piano. We uh, grew up listening to Statesman, Blackwood Brothers, yeah. Gospel Quartet. Mm -hmm. Mom played the piano. We took the records home, put them on the hi fi, remember the hi fi, and uh, learned them. And the rest, to, as they say, is history. We moved Odessa. Yeah, when did y'all when did y'all come to Nashville? When did you make your first record? And then went to Nashville later on. And then well, they were in, they were in college. You know, we're the first generation to be the side of our family to get to go to college. Oh, good. And uh, didn't do much good. <laughs> it will not keep you from being insane. But uh, I got the break with Dottie West. I was in law school. The boys were at Texas Tech. I was at University of Houston. You were in law school. You were going right. to be a lawyer. Well. <laughs> You know, I knew I wanted to No, be. no, no. No, he said he went to law, law school. school. He I went. Know. He went. He just went. Well, he went. <laughs> You'd make a fine lawyer. Well, you... I could see you in the trial. You would just you be know, running uh, the court. Quite a leap from starting law school. <laughs> well, here's, here's the deal. There's an old boy. Old boy was the only witness. Old farmer. Old country boy. He was the only witness to a wreck. And the lawyer, the first... First rule about being a lawyer, don't ask a question to which you do not know the answer. Okay, that's the first day in law school. That lawyer got up there and he said, well, Mr. Jones said, uh, could you please tell us what happened? He said, well, I was walking down the street, said that blue car, a blue car come around the corner and ran into that red car. And that lawyer said, and you, you saw that? Yes, sir, I did. He said, well, how far away were you from uh, the wreck? He said, oh, about 11, 12 blocks. That lawyer said, well, how old are you, Mr. Jones? He said, I'm 97. He said, well, sir, just how far can you see? He said, well, I can see the moon. How far is that? <laughs> so I was in law school, and, and I got a break. I won't go into the whole deal. A friend of ours told us that Elvis, uh, that the Imperials, a great gospel group, uh, that one of our heroes, Jake Hess, of the, was with the state, you know, has started that group. And, and I mentioned Joe Muscale a while ago, and it was Armin Morales, uh, uh, Terry Blackwood, Jim Murray, and a guy named uh, Roger Wiles had left the group, their baritone singer. And a friend of mine told me they needed a baritone singer. I was working at Steak and Ale. You should have seen it. Those little Lord, those long socks, little Lord Fauntleroy pants, white flying nun shirt. It was, a, you know. Well, I called them. I went home and called them, and they said, we really don't need anybody right now. We're, you know, all we're doing is, ooh, oh, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. So I went to work, but they told me they, they would talk about it and they might call me back. You can imagine a kid from West Texas who might get the chance to sing with his heroes and with Elvis. I mean, you know. So I went to work, and finally I told the guys. I was so excited, you know, my fellow waiters. And uh, I said, I'm not going to get Well, I was waiting tables out there that night. I was so excited. I, I was on, you know, skating. And one of them said, hey, Gatlin, Elvis is on the phone. Well, he wasn't. But, I mean, they... It was Joe Muscato, and he said, when can you come out there? And I said, tomorrow. And, and here, here's the deal. You, God puts the people and the, in your life 
you know, God made time to keep it all from happening at once. That's what uh, Albert Einstein said, and Mickey Newberry stole it for a song, and then I stole it from Mickey. But anyway, <laughs> I didn't have enough money to fly to Vegas the next morning. The waiters took up an offering for me of their tips that night at Steak and Ale to fly me out there. That's pretty cool. So got out there, met Elvis, uh, did not get that job because God had different plans. Uh, met El the night he closed on Wednesday. In Vegas, you, you open on Thursdays and close on Wednesdays. So he closed Wednesday night and Thursday night right across the street. The Imperials went over uh, to d be on the Jimmy Dean show. That's what they needed me for. They did a lot more singing with, you know, with Jimmy Dean. They were more of an integral part. I didn't get that job. I didn't get that job, but I met Dottie West. She said, you look enough, look enough like Mickey Newberry. You've got to be able to write a song. And I wrote a couple of songs while I was there, and she kind of felt sorry for me. And so she said, send me some songs. I'll try to help you. So I went back, rode with her band in the bus back to Oklahoma City and flew down to Houston. I wrote her eight songs. Sent them to her. She sent us a plane ticket. Janice and I moved to Nashville five years later, won a Grammy for Song of the Year for Broken Lady. Oh, wow. See? That's, that's how this happened for us. And I started the little solo career because the boys were in school, knowing all along that when, it, when and if it were to happen, that's all we've ever wanted to do is sing music with each other. People say, do y'all get along? Yes, we do. We do. We play golf. <laughs> Except for Turd Blossom, we don't get along with it. You can say that in Texas. You can call somebody. No, we don't. We give the secret to that is giving each other room. We're each our, we've got our own families, uh, and all of that. You know, wives and kids. And Rudy's gonna be a grandpa pretty soon because it's uh, it, that grad, that daughter's getting married when next month, two months, whenever it is. Yeah, it's, and he's a great uncle. He takes care of all of uh, you know. So it always was about us doing that. So that was a long story, but you know, basically, and and what happened? That was in '71. See, I was just a junior in college at the time, and so it, it actually took till '74, '75 till Rudy moved and had a group and sang, and then I joined him, and so I didn't get we didn't really get to Nashville the two of us till '75. So Larry laid a, a lot of groundwork for three or four years as a solo artist before. That was during the Vietnam War, and I was still in school, and all things. It's just a matter of being, you know, when opportunity knocks, just like it did for him, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be able to step through. Everybody's story is different, but you've got to be able to step through when it happens. And when it does, you better put it on the top shelf, which he did. And when we got the opportunity, we stepped through because we'd always planned it, but it doesn't always. I, I got a call on Thursday night to, to come to, Nash, uh, to Nashville before I was about to start my second year of teaching school, spent my wife, we were married, and she was about to start her third year of school. And on Thursday night that I was going to move to Nashville and sing with Rudy and a group because they were singing back up for Tammy and I quit, my, quit our jobs on Friday. On Saturday, I drove to Dallas from Lubbock, Texas, and spent the night, then drove the rest of the way Sunday. And Sunday night, I'm on a bus with Tammy and singing back up with the uh, Asleep at the Wheel and Johnny Rodriguez. So that happened from Thursday night, I'm a teacher, till Sunday night. I'm singing back up with the Tammy Winnett. Wow. Wow. Whole story sometime. So you just, I'm just saying you just better be ready when opportunity knocks, step through and, yeah. and, and be prepared for, for it. And, and we were blessed. It, it, I couldn't have planned it that way. Mm -hmm. And then from there, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to record an, al an album together and won a Grammy for Broken Lady and mm -hmm. decided to put the mm -hmm. band. So that's how, mm -hmm. that's how then we formed after we were all in Nashville. We went to Memphis on our first gig <laughs> in your white pickup truck and my beat up Cadillac and Don and Tim's beat up Toyota. <laughs> That's how we got to Memphis from Nashville for our, our first, first gig. Our, your first June gig as a treat. And 76. I had told him about a week earlier that he was the bass player. Oh. I never no played. I never played bass before in my life. What? I didn't play guitar. I still don't play guitar. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, can, I know a few chords, but I'm not a guitar player. Well, how did you how did you learn that fast? Then? I'm very blessed because we all have good ears. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to the songs and listened to what the bass players were playing and tried to mimic what they were playing. Wow. And interesting enough, I'm playing bass on all the gold. You heard all the gold. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm playing bass and like singing, but playing bass on that and a couple of other hits. But I just really learned to play bass. And I always tell people, 
I'm not a great bass player. I don't have a whole lot of chops because I didn't play a lot of other people's songs. Right. When I learned to play, I played our song. Right, you don't need and a whole bunch of And bass. so I can play, and I learned the Nashville system, which uh, is very technical, but I don't want to go over the edge. But I learned how to play that and follow along the way you're yeah. supposed to move yeah, to yeah. play certain chords. And so, but I taught myself just by listening and mimicking wow. that. True talent, <laughs> that true deal. talent. Okay, we're gonna show you the Nashville you, number system. You, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> ba, 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 we're in that key. Uh, um, uh, okay. This I'm on I'm on the lead. Oh yeah. Sing it. That's the Nashville number system. It's how many of you can read music out there? Okay, we can't very well. Now we've loaned a lot of money to people who can, but. That was a terrible joke. That's terrible. <laughs> Funny. It was a little dig. A lot of the pickers, when they came down from the mountains, out of the hills, Tennessee and Nashville became that, that recording center, they had to have a way of, of playing new songs and music with each other. And instead of uh, all cows eat grass and the FGB, I mean, we can sight read a little bit, but instead of off the cliff, they just got together, and whatever key they were in, that was one. So if you're in G, that's one, and you go to C, D is five, and G is back to one. It's the same well, difference. If that is too low, low, you go A is one, D is four, E is five, A is one. So it just matters. The numbers remain the same. The same, no matter what key. one becomes the base. So what you do. So well, it's like it's like it's like do do re mi fa sol la ti do. It's the same difference. It's just eight yeah. eight notes. If you can play those eight notes and then the chords that go around them. Ready? Do. A d everybody. Two, three, well, four. Like do a deer, a female deer. Okay, stop. We're gonna do it the Nashville way. We're singing. Ready? One, two, three. One, three. One, three. Two, three, four, four, three, two, one, four. That's it. Since my baby said, said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's your. I want to just open up the floor because I don't think we can top that at all. Do y'all have some questions? Well, well uh, can, I, can I add one yeah, about, uh, you to follow up on your story about being ready to, to step through that door? When you're, well, Steve and I, are, when we're in college, <laughs> Larry's good friend Mike Campbell was working at a bar. And I asked him how much he was making a week, and, he, and he's like 300, 350 a week. I said, You're making what? $350 a week to sing and play guitar? When are you leaving? <laughs> I, I, Steve and I can do this, which we, you know. I, I play guitar and sang a few songs. He did, I don't think you, hadn't you played a little, nothing. Okay. Well, I went and talked to the owner Saturday night and said, Yeah, my brother and I have a little group, which we didn't. Yeah. And, We'd like to, you know, we'd like to come take Mike's spot when he leaves. Three hundred. I was making a dollar seventy an hour at some store, going to college and working. You know, bringing up seventy bucks a week or something like that. And he said, "Yeah, y'all be here tomorrow night to try out." I went, well, what? We'll be here. <laughs> and Steve said, uh, "What?" And all afternoon, Sunday afternoon, he's got it. We had a. Where did we I get had, that? I, I don't know. I had a stand-up bass for some reason. I don't know how it got there. It was we a flower really pot or something. I didn't really play bass. We still don't know how that bass got there, but I started, I had, you know, I knew some uh, some songs. and you know, Puff, but, the magic. Well, you know, some, you know, some Crosby, Stills, Nash, and the Jimmy Buffett songs, and this, that, and the other, and Steve, pumping on that bass. Boy, here we go. I really just moved my hand a lot so they think I knew what I was doing. I, <laughs> so we I, went and auditioned, and he, oh, we Rudy, got the job. Rudy's singing, and Steve's going, <laughs> <laughs> And these poor old fingers were just all blistered up after that. But we got the job. And we, <laughs> yeah, well, what was, what was, what he forgot to say about that story, Mike was making three or three fifty a week. So when Eli asked him, said, well, how much money do you guys need? Rudy said, they're two fifty. And I'm going, that's the last time you're going to manage us. <laughs> yeah. We, we go for solo act at three fifty, the two of us split in two fifty. Come on, man. I thought I was going to scare him off for fifty bucks. He had more money than God. Yeah. And that was a week. Doing three sets, three forty-five minute sets a night. He paid us two fifty a week. Happy to have it. Yeah, oh boy, I was making okay. seventy dollars a week. And this gentleman was first. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Rudy, uh, what year was it when y'all first got y'all's uh, 
Well, like Steve said, I moved there in 71, so I guess uh, I had three or four singles before really uh, uh, the first album was The Pilgrim. Was that in like 73? But we, I mean, we did a bunch of records when we were kids, but the first commercial album that I did for Monument Records, God Bless Fred Foster and Donnie oh, West Fred and Chris Foster. Christoph, uh, was 73 with The Pilgrim. And had some uh, girl singers, the Road Sisters from Memphis were great, sang some, some backup. And then I guess the first album that we all did Excuse me, did I just burp? Did I get any on me? <laughs> Probably straight ahead. 70. Who would know with six. that t-shirt? That's <laughs> <laughs> why you, why you did it. So oh, about 70. Six. Four, six? Five or six? Five. What was the first six. one we did? Was again? it straight ahead? Straight ahead, I guess. No, it was. No? Family and Friends. Family and Friends. Yeah. So about 75 or 76. Yeah. So. Y'all have story. Any questions? Yeah. We're oh. very grateful. Somebody else? Last, last <coughs> question. I'm getting the cutoff from the director over there. So what does he got, know? Hey, I know. We've got. Hey, Brad. Oh, that's Are a you good kidding? question. That's yes, a we're going to send good question. We're going to send this wad of money to him <laughs> right here. I, 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 I paid paid them back with the joy of knowing <laughs> that they, they helped the struggling, yeah. struggling singers long. Oh, right. <laughs> And they ate the joy for they couldn't eat it. Mm -hmm. Roger Miller. Uh, Roger Scott Lorenzo. Thank you. How you doing? It's good to see you again. Old friend of mine. Um, to the, the first night. I mean, I, I, I'm, incre I'm married to an incredible woman. See, Steve and I and their best friends. When Janice and I got the, the call, when Dottie told me, I'm, I'm, when Dottie said, come to Nashville and I'll try to help you, sent me a plane ticket when I sent her the eight songs. Janice said, you'll never be happy if we don't do it. Let's try it. I'll teach school. We'll go try it. We'll make it. And we did. The first night I got there, I was introduced to Mickey Newberry, Red Lane, Hank Cochran, who, you know, hit songs out the Wazootas and some of my real heroes. That And Dottie facilitated all that. Well, I went to work as a janitor at WLAC-TV for 100 bucks a week. And I also, at the King of the Road, the Roof, Rogers Hotel in Nashville, at the Roof, they had a, <coughs> a nightclub. And Jack Green and Jeannie Seeley were working there. They had a, a kind of a touring show together. And they asked me if I'd work lights. Well, working lights at that deal was, the lights are on, the lights are medium, the lights are off. <laughs> well, about the third night of that <clears throat> that run, Jeannie Seeley said, well, we've got a light man over here. Can I sing all of us? Y'all want to hear him? You know how, how Jeannie is. Yeah. They said, yeah, 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 yeah. So I got up there. <coughs> And played this little old guitar that, that her, her uh, acoustic guitar that her electric guitar player had one over in the box over there and it wasn't any music. Well, I sang a song called "Everything I Know About Cheating." I learned from watching you. <laughs> so uh, I sang the song, and just the, the little three or four hundred, but just went. It went wild. I mean, it, it did. I, I everything I know about cheating. I learned from watching. I mean, it was a country tear-jerking son of a gun, and I wonderful applause. And I was grateful, and I, uh, I I took my bow and walked off. And I heard a voice. See, it was right here, and it was a small. It wasn't like a great big. It was like this, but the first table in a nightclub, like it is in Vegas. It was right here, you know. So I thanked, and I couldn't see anything because, it, it, and so I started off, and I hear this voice. I want to hear it again. <laughs> and I said, and I just saw, because uh, the guy kind of leaned up that, and it was fair and young. A and I said, Mr. Young, I'm just the light man. I, I, and I was walking away, and another guy sticks his head, and it was Roger. He said, I own this son bitch, and I want to hear it again, too. <laughs> it's true. 
guess you did it again. Yeah. Now, see, here's the deal. In Texas, son bitch ain't a bad word. Y'all just gonna have to deal with it. Now, no, 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 no. That's a bad word. But bitch ain't. So, I, I, I you, you can't, you cannot make these things up, can you? You know, human beings can't make up God's stuff. Okay? And that's what I, that's, that's what this, this, this is. So, uh, we sat around that night in Roger's suite. Uh, and by this time, he'd already moved to uh, <clears throat> to L.A., uh, had left Nashville. But that night, we sat around and passed a guitar and, and sang some songs. And, and I didn't have, I mean, thank God, we've been blessed with some, some good songs. Thank, thank God. And I tell people, the bad ones, I write all by myself. <laughs> the great ones, and there are some, I just copy those down. Okay? We love these guys. We gotta let them go. It doesn't hurt to have these guys. In. So Roger and I started hanging out, and he'd call me Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Well, the Lorenzo Gatlin brothers. No, we'll just call Lorenzo it. Lorenzo the... Esteban Ricardo. <laughs> Rudolfo. 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 What is my name? The Gatlin brothers, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave you. We'll leave you with this. Roger. Roger walked up to me one time. He said, Lorenzo. I said, What? what? He said. Did you ever notice how much weight a chicken can gain and never show it in the face? <laughs> we'll open with that tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah, there's shows tomorrow night at 6.30 and 9 o'clock. We love you, Gatlin Brothers.